Hey guys, Mike here. I just wanted to show you guys a little bit of what goes on sometimes before we do the actual concrete floor pour. Um, sometimes, sometimes I bid out a little bit of the prep work if we have time to do that. If not, the general contractor can do that. But on this job, the homeowner is the general contractor. So I bid out some of the prep work in advance. Now we don't typically get into grading and, and excavation work like this. The guys on this job, I actually I actually got them hired on this job to do this. And so we just showed up to do what we needed to do and they were just finishing up so we decided to jump in and help them. Now these guys doing this, this that's all they specialize in is just doing excavation. So they'll do uh, houses, garages, slabs, uh, they do commercial work, you know, they'll do driveways, and parking lots, and all that kind of stuff. But that's all they do. They don't do any concrete work like we do. And, and the same with us, you know, we just do concrete work. We don't get into excavation because there's too many guys up here where I live that specialize in it like these guys. I mean, why should I do it when my bread and butter is pouring concrete every day? We want to put concrete on the ground every single day. And that's what we did today, this morning, is we poured concrete. And Darren is up there finishing that. And then we can come and get another job ready for another pour the next day. So I sub out the excavation work like this. And these guys are experts at it. And then if I want, you know, I can tack on 10, 15, 20% to their price. So I can make money while they're here working. And then I can also make money while we're pouring concrete. So I don't need to do both. It's just too much overhead for us. And there's already enough guys around here that do it really, really good. What I like about these guys and why I hire them is because, you know, number one, they got some good people working for them. They know what they're doing. Yeah. Number two is they actually set up a laser and use a laser while they're grading. And I know there's some guys out there, some jobs I'm on that they guys just eyeball things. They just don't even use a laser to check. So. The good thing about coming behind these guys when we pour a concrete floor is I know the dirt level is going to be perfect. It's going to be graded right exactly where I need it. So if I have a four inch floor going in here, I know I'm going to get four inches everywhere. Not two and a half in one spot, six in another spot. It's going to be a consistent four inches. I know that if I'm going to pour a concrete floor in here that's going to have a slope to it, like two inches from back to front, that these guys are going to slope the dirt exactly the same way and by using the laser they're going to get it right on now the guy holding the stick there with the, with the receiver also has a paint can in his hand and when he gets to where the dirt is right where it needs to be he'll spray a dot there and that's how the guy running the excavator knows he's right on grade but Tia jumped in there and was doing a little compacting for him. That's another thing. You know, a lot of guys don't have a compactor. They just run over it with the excavator or bang it down with a bucket. That's just not good enough. you got to have an you got to have a compactor to run over it to really pack it well. So what we were here to do mainly is, is get the styrofoam down. And the reason we're putting styrofoam down on this job is just what the, the city code was in this city we're working in today. So they call for two inches of styrofoam underneath the concrete floor. Now does it really need it? Probably not. Um, but that's just what the code is, so we got to follow code here. Now it will help keep the floor a little more insulated and it will make this building a little easier to heat in the long run. So it's not a bad idea to put it down, especially if it's going to be a heated space. Um, but it is expensive. A 4x8 sheet of that 2 inch styrofoam goes for, you know, between 35 and 40 bucks a sheet up here. So it does add quite a significant cost to uh, the concrete floor. Let me know where you guys are from. Do you have to put styrofoam under your floors or, or, or don't you, you know? And if you do, is it a city code? Is it something other than that? Just let me know down in the comments. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm finishing up cutting around the edges snapping a chalk line I'm getting my measurements then I'm going to use my uh, battery saw just to cut that off and fill in around while Luke continues to lay down the big sheets this stuff cuts really easy with a battery saw that's the cleanest and quickest way we found to cut it I know you can use a utility knife if you want but it really it dulls the knife up pretty quick
Luke's into carrying two. He doesn't like to make too many trips, so he'll carry two or three if he's got to. Whatever it takes to get the job done. And I'm going to fit that in, then I'll move on to that next one, that two-footer right there, and I'll get that fit in. Sometimes, you know, some of the styrofoam is scored already, so it's scored at 16 inches, and then some of it's scored right in the middle at two feet, so if that's all you need, you can break it pretty easy. Now, there's no radiant heat getting put in this floor. A lot of these floors we have up here in Maine have radiant heat. Who has radiant heat out there in their floor? Let me know down in the comments, and if you do, do you like it? Do you think it works good? Um, let's let everybody know how that stuff works. We actually pour a lot of that up here in Maine. A lot of people use that for their heat source. So that's about as easy as it is fitting those pieces in around the edges. Now Luke's going to start laying some wire. So that's what we had to do today is put the styrofoam in, lay the wire mesh, and then just shoot our grade around the perimeter. This is going to be like a pole barn when we're all done. Uh, make sure you subscribe and come on back. I'll, I'll show you the pour here on an upcoming video about how we poured this thing. It's really cool. But basically, as far as setting grade in this, I'm just going to go around and get a get an average of how level that uh, subgrade is. And I know it's really level. And then I'll just raise my floor up four inches over that, and we'll snap a chalk line around that perimeter. A lot of the garages done up here in Maine have a frost wall like this. So that frost wall goes down in the ground four feet. And there's one foot, about a foot sticking up. So that's a five foot wall. And there's a footing under that too. It's about a 16 inch wide footing by about eight to 10 inches deep. So the foundation guy comes in, they do the footing first one day. Then they come back the next day, do the walls, pour them, and then they strip the next day. So it's, it's like a three day thing for them. I'm going to get that last little piece fitted in, then Luke and I will finish up on the wire. And then one last thing we do is we've got to put a form up across those garage door openings. So we got a, I got like a 16 foot door here, then I got a three footer in back, and then there's another three footer off to the right. So that's one of the other things we do for the prep. And that's all figured into my bid. So we'll figure a day to come in here and prep, and we'll figure a day to pour and finish the concrete. And then we got a saw our expansion joints, and then on this one we even we even did a concrete sealer after we were done. So all that stuff will be coming up in a in a upcoming video, guys. If you like this kind of stuff, please hit that smash that like button for me. Hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed already, and then uh, come on back for the next video. Thanks a lot.